Hi everybody, it's Kate from Valeria and today I'm going to be talking to you about the best ways that endurance athletes, that swimmers, cyclists, triathletes and runners can work their core muscles. I commonly find that because the way that I think about core strengthening is a little bit different from maybe what's a little bit more traditional when it comes to strength training, that often people think that I'm not a fan of core strength training. I am. The core is very, very important. Okay. So obviously people talk about core strengthening and you can think of it like a cylinder here. The core is very important because it creates this nice stable base for when it comes to transferring power. Um, so let's say that we're generating uh, power through our upper body when we're swimming or generating power through our lower limbs when we are running or cycling, having a nice, strong, stable core there can help us improve that. And it can also potentially help minimize injury risk. Potentially, researching that is still a little bit sketchy, but I'm not gonna go into that. But what's really important is that we don't get so hyper fixated on creating a strong core and we actually forget about the muscles that are actually producing that power and generating that power and helping propel us forwards. So when it comes to swimming, you could have a really nice strong core, but that's not going to be the thing that's going to help you actually have the best pull when it comes to then producing uh, a pull in your swim stroke. Or you could have a really nice core, but if you don't have calf strength and hamstring quad and glute stability through there, you're not going to have the most biomechanically efficient or productive or best performing uh, running technique. So we can't forget about the things that actually propel us forwards in our endurance sports and the reason that this is really important and um, the reasoning behind the way that I go about core strengthening is because as endurance athletes we are generally very very time poor in the first study of my PhD my first ever publication we did a huge survey where we surveyed over 390 endurance athletes and we asked them what the biggest stopping factor to doing strength training was and it was time restraints and that leads me to then go why would we waste our time doing isolated core exercises when we can target those core muscles just as if not arguably more efficiently in movements that also target our lower limbs and our upper limbs at the same time so we can target all of us to help us optimally improve our performance and minimize injury risk. And that is what I'm gonna take you through today. I'm gonna to take you through a little bit of the background information on it and I'm gonna give you a huge amount of exercises that is gonna help you improve your core strength whilst also minimizing other injury risk and maximizing your endurance performance. To back this up, a study done in 2018 actually looked at the activation of core muscles, in particular rectus abdominis, internal external obliques and rectus spinae of a squat, so a back squat exercise done at six RM, so six repetitions at a heavy weight and compared that to a traditional plank plus 20% of the participants' body weights put on them during that traditional plank. Ugh, yuck. And they looked at the activation of the core muscles over these two exercises to see which one was the best at actually recruiting these core muscles. What they actually found was the rectus abdominis, so commonly known as the six-pack muscle, and the internal and external obliques had the same amount of activation during the plank and the squat as each other. But what they actually found was that the erector spinae, so the muscle on the back of us, had greater activation during the squats and they found as the duration of these exercises went on, there was actually a greater activation of that erector spinae and that decreased in the planks. The authors then concluded that the 6RM back squat was a better option for when it came to improving core strength than the planks with 20% of body weight on top of them. And this is really good news for endurance athletes. One, planks, yuck. Look, that's a personal opinion. I find them horrible. But what we do know is that there's some really, really good research showing that even just completing squats by themselves, four sets of four squats, three times a week can significantly improve not only cycling economy, but running economy. So if you're looking to improve your core strength, but also maximize your endurance performance, wonderful squats could be a really good alternative. So that's just one example of the literature and I'm going to take you through some more of that in a little bit. But let's just take a step back and get a little bit of an understanding of what our core muscles are. Now this is something that if you tried googling this, you tried looking this up or listening to many different videos, you were going to get so many different opinions about what the core muscles are and there is really no right or wrong. I'm going to simplify in this video that our core muscles predominantly make up the abdominals and the back muscles. There are people who say well, it should include the hip muscles, especially the hip flexors and the glutes. I kind of agree with that because I think that it creates a really nice stable base, but I'm not going to include it in this because more traditionally pe people do think of core muscles as abdominals and the back. So we've got rectus abdominis, the muscle that goes along here, our six pack muscle that does some trunk flexion and it helps us stabilize us. 
we've got our transverse abdominis. That's the one that people think of. They call it the corset muscle. That's the one where you hear about a lot in Pilates and as sort of being a little bit of the culprit of the cause of low back pain because way back when there was a study done that found that people with low back pain when they raised their opposite arm, they found a delay um, in TA and uh, potentially multifidus activation. People who had low back pain, those who didn't, uh, but that's not really the cause of low back pain. But I think that one gets a little bit of a bad rap uh, when it comes to core muscles as the culprit of all the causes of low back pain. But it's not the case, but it is important in creating some nice spinal stability through there. Um, we also have our internal and external obliques. So these are the ones that run a little bit more diagonally um, out on the lateral sides of our rectus abdominis. And then on the back of us, we have our lumbar multifidus. So these are smaller muscles that go vertebrae to vertebrae, and they're really important in stabilizing through the spine. We have a rectus spinae that runs up and down our spine as well, that does back extension and some side flexion. And I always like to include QL as well, which is actually a really, really deep abdominal muscle that gets confused a little bit with a back muscle, a little bit arguable there, but that does side flexion and that helps stabilize through our backs as well. So they are some of the core muscles that we're going to talk about and how we're going to strengthen them when it comes to picking the best strengthening exercises for endurance athletes. Now, interestingly, um, a, a really good study that was published has looked at the activation of these muscles through EMG activity, which I know has its limitations, but it's the best that we have when it comes to looking at muscle activation at the moment. They have looked at EMG activity of these core muscles um, and during different exercises. And interestingly, particularly when it comes to rectus abdominis and internal and external obliques, what they have found is that these have the highest amount of activation during free weight exercises. With lumbar um, multifidus, that actually had the greatest activation when it came to more traditional exercises like a deadlift. So this is really good news for endurance athletes. This means that then with free weight and traditional exercises, which we know are the ones if we get the loads right that can significantly improve endurance performance, we can not only improve our endurance performance because they work on the lower or the upper limbs, but we can target our core strength as well. We're getting this beautiful double whammy of how we can strengthen up our core and improve our performance. Now, before I go into some of these examples, I also wanted to touch on another aspect of core strengthening that I do hear quite a bit, and that is the use of a stability or a BOSU ball. The research is really iffy when it comes to using a stability or a BOSU ball. Some studies do show that you can have an increase in core activation with the use of an unstable surface, but particularly for endurance athletes, this really misses the point of the exercises. We know that you need to load up in some maximal strength training parameters to get really good tendon, muscular and bone adaptations for our bodies to be able to tolerate the loads of endurance training, but also to significantly improve performance. When you end up doing exercises on a stability or a BOSU ball, you can't have the same loads. And that's quite simply because you're on an unstable surface. If you do a really heavy barbell squat on a BOSU ball, you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to roll an ankle. You're going to hurt yourself in some way. So you can't do it that heavy. So you may... Probably not even. Some research actually does show that doing exercises on um, on an unstable surface or a BOSA ball decreases core activation. Some show the opposite. But you may get a little bit more core activation, but you are completely missing the point of being able to load up through your upper or your lower limbs. So they're not the best option for endurance athletes. If you are purely focusing on core strengthening and that's the only thing that you want to aim for, maybe they could be a good option. But again, time restraints and picking the best exercises for you, they're not the best. And this doesn't come down to, you know, my bias in any particular exercises. This is just, you're giving up the time, you're going into the gym, you are making the effort, get the most out of your exercise choices, pick the most efficient ones to target everything that you can, go in, use your strength training as a means to an end, benefits done, I'm going to go and perform better. So that's what it's about. It's about not about just picking a good exercise, it's picking the best ones for you for your maximal benefits. So I'm now going to take you through some of the particular muscle groups and the exercises that are arguably the best at recruiting those particular core muscles. The first one, that rectus abdominis, that six pack muscle. So for this one, generally your highest amount of EMG activity seen in different exercises have actually been with a Bulgarian split squat and a back squat. And this again, wonderful news. With these, you get to really load up through the lower limbs. We know that Bulgarian split squats or single leg uh, split stance squats are really good for running performance and injury prevention because they get a lot of uh, hip adductor and abductor work through there. Um, same with your heavy squats. So we know we can load those up heavy, get those improvements in the cycling and running economy. So you're not only going to get performance benefits through your lower limbs, but lots of nice core activation through there as well. So these are two fantastic options for when it comes to improving that rectus abdominis strength. 
Next one's to work on particularly that transverse abdominis and your internal and external obliques. Generally, your research shows that any unilateral exercises where we are challenging that stability because these muscles play a big role in rotation. So any unilateral exercise where you have to keep that spine nice and uh, stable through there is the best way to target these muscles. So again, you can tie this in really nicely with some great exercise choices when it comes to improving endurance performance. So some of these that I really like to pick for endurance athletes in particular is a side Side plank. Side plank has also been shown to be one of the best exercises that targeting through that glute needs. So really important when it comes to minimizing injury risk through your hips and increasing hip stability, particularly in the single leg stance phase of running. So not only is it going to work on that, but also in your transverse abdominis and your internal external obliques. Scapular taps are a really nice other option as well, particularly for loading up through the shoulders. So you're not only getting core strengthening, but some really good shoulder loading through there. Copenhagen's are another really nice option. You get a little bit of shoulder loading, lots of core activation through there, but lots of adductor work. And research does show that these are really, really effective in minimizing adductor injuries, particularly um, in sports that involve running. A kneeling kettlebell press. I love these ones because you get a little bit of lower body loading in there, some really nice shoulder stability, some upper body work, a bit of postural work, but again, really, really good core activation. So they are a fantastic option. And of course in here, I would put in your Bulgarian split squats as well. So I think you're noticing a trend with those ones in particular. Now, erector spinae, this is what I touched on uh, back when I talked about that study comparing your planks um, and your back squats. I found the greatest uh, uh, activation of that erector spinae was particularly with your back squats. And that's because we have to keep ourselves nice and upright when we're doing a back squat because we've got the weight on the back of us. So back squats, particularly heavy, surround that 6RM, so doing six repetitions at the most weight that you can do, can be a really, really effective way to strengthen up through your erector spinae. So if you suffer from any form of back pain, they can be a really good option, of course work within your limits but other ones that have been really effective to improve erector spinae strength and really target those muscles are also deadlifts so deadlifts that's no surprise are a really good exercise for loading up through the lower back a lot of people i find go oh gosh deadlifts they're a little bit scary but they're such a good core exercise be really sensible with your load and build up through your deadlifts through there and you get lots of lats and lots of erector spinae and lots of load through your lower back muscles as well and one in the research that's also supported to really get your erector spinae firing up is a hip thrust. So hip thrusts are a really nice option if you like a more supported exercise, if you're a little bit more worried about, for example, your deadlift technique, or you don't feel as confident with that, I would substitute out your deadlift and alternate that with a hip thrust. With these ones, you could also make them a split stance or a staggered stance hip thrust, and that might increase a little bit more of that unilateral loading, a little bit more stability through your core as well, or you could do a traditional hip thrust as well to really target up through your erector spinae. Interestingly, to really target that lumbar multifidus, so the smaller one in the back that plays a really important role in stabilizing through that spine, this has been found to have the highest recruitment with a lot more of those traditional lifts. Deadlifts is one of them, particularly at 75% of body weight deadlifts um, have been shown to have a high activation in that lumbar multifidus, but also bent over row at 45% of body weight. Bent over rows are generally one of my go-tos when it comes to improving core strength because you get a lot of back muscles, a lot of the front, the abdominal muscles, some really good upper body strengthening, but also you're isometrically loading up through your glutes and your hamstrings as well. And I find that bent over rows are such a good option, particularly for triathletes where you're trying to work on upper body, lower body strengthening and some really good core in there so they are a really really good option to and of course lumbar multifidus has been found to have really high activation in a back squat so again everything sort of leads back to those back squats but they are a fantastic option as well so from these, you can see that your standouts are generally heading towards your deadlifts, your back squats, and a bent over row is a really good option. But not to forget about that transverse abdominis and your internal and external obliques. Aim for any unilateral exercise that you can do, but think about your sport and what it is that you are trying to work on. When it comes to picking that unilateral exercise, think, am I working on my lower limbs? Go for something like a Bulgarian split squat or a single leg deadlift is another really good option as well. So anything that you can really target through there, or you're aiming for a little bit more upper body, do that kneeling kettlebell press or a single arm kneeling lat pull down. Really think about your sports and those demands uh, and what you're truly, really trying to target and tie that in really nicely. So my big take home is try not to waste your time on doing isolated core exercises. You can target those core muscles just as if not better doing free weight and traditional exercises. Tie them in with your injury prevention exercises for other parts of your body and your overall performance. You can do this. When you go to the gym, 
pick your exercises wisely, get the most out of it. Your strength training is that means to an end. Be really concise and really simple in your program. Don't inflict excessive fatigue or excessive load um, by doing lots of isolated exercises. Tie them in really nicely together. You will find in our Valeria app that I put all of this together in those programs where you generally won't see a program that just says this is just for core strength because everything that I do in that app has in mind that core strengthening for endurance athletes. So core strengthening, it is important. We do want to work those muscles. There's just really efficient ways that you can do it and it just comes to picking those exercises wisely. So I hope that you have learned something from this. If you want to kickstart your strength training journey, make sure you download our Valeria app. Currently on Apple, but don't worry, Android users, it is coming very, very soon. Hang on tight. We've made some really good improvements to it as well. But if you have any questions about anything core strength related or strength training for endurance athletes, pop them in the comments below and we'll chat to you soon.